Cardiac failure. Etiology, pathophysiology, and pathology. The common causes of heart failure are ischemic heart disease frequency is 50%, dilated cardiomyopathy or unknown frequency is 35%, valve disease frequency is 10%, hypertension frequency is 5%. Left ventricular, LV, systolic dysfunction is commonly associated with ventricular dilatation. Other causes include viral myocarditis, toxins, e.g. alcohol, cocaine, and chemotherapeutic agents, metabolic abnormalites, e.g. thyroid disease and acromegaly, and inflammatory conditions, e.g. sarcoidosis and connective tissue disorders. In patients with idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy, around 25% are thought to have a familial origin. After a single episode of cardiac damage, e.g. a myocardial infarction, MI, LV dysfunction is often progressive even in the absence of further cardiac insults. This appears to result from the neurohumoral response to reduced cardiac output which is initially compensatory but becomes detrimental in the long term, Fig. 47. Epidemiology The prevalence of heart failure is approximately 4 per 1,000, 28 per 1,000 in those aged over 65 years. Heart failure is the primary diagnosis in about 4% of general medical admissions to hospital. Increasing prevalence is the result of an aging population. Better survival after MI. Better survival with heart failure. Clinical presentation. Patients suffering from heart failure commonly present with the following. Exertional breathlessness. Fatigue. Paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Cough productive of clear frothy sputum. Ankle swelling. Orthopnoea. NB. Severity of breathlessness in heart failure is graded according to the New York Heart Association, NYHA, classification. NYHA class I, impaired LV function but asymptomatic on ordinary activity. NYHA class II, symptoms resulting in slight limitation of ordinary activity. NYHA class III, symptoms on minimal exertion e.g. walking around the house. NYHA Class 4, Symptoms Present at Rest Physical Signs The physical signs may include the following. Pulse, tachycardia or atrial fibrillation, AF. JVP, elevated. If it is up to angle of the jaw, then suspect tricuspid regurgitation. TR. Check for any systolic V waves that coincide with contralateral carotid. Also check for pulsatile liver. Left parasternal heave, usually right ventricular hypertrophy, occasionally the result of greatly enlarged left atrium. Heart sounds, third heart sound, probably the most sensitive and specific physical sign for LV dysfunction, but has poor reproducibility. Pansystolic murmur of functional mitral regurgitation, other murmurs may be present and relate to etiology. Basal lung crackles. Bilateral ankle edema with or without ascites. Investigations. ECG. A completely normal ECG is rare in heart failure. Look for. Rhythm, e.g. AF. LV hypertrophy. Previous MI. Left bundle branch block. Left axis deviation. Chest radiograph. In addition to excluding lung pathology, look for heart size. Pulmonary edema. Pleural effusions. Blood tests. Urea and electrolytes. Associated hypoatremia hypokalemia, diuretic treatment, and renal dysfunction. Liver function tests, 
often mildly deranged in chronic heart failure. Thyroid function tests, etiology. Hemoglobin, mild anemia common and associated with adverse outcomes. If present check hematinics. Brain natriuretic peptide, a normal value virtually excludes heart failure. Echocardiography. Gold standard for diagnosis of heart failure. Use for assessment of LV systolic function, filling pressures, and valvular function. Differential diagnosis. Consider the following. COR pulmonal. Nephrotic syndrome. Renal failure. Liver failure. Treatment. Emergency. In someone suffering from acute pulmonary edema, carry out the following. Sit the patient up. Give oxygen. Monitor blood gases. Give intravenous diamorphine, venodilator. Offload with intravenous infusion of nitrate titrated to maximum tolerated dose, but keep BP greater than 90 mmHg systolic. Give intravenous furosemide in small aliquots, e.g. 40-80 mg. Check FBC, urea, and electrolytes, and cardiac enzymes. Monitor clinical response including urine output, catheteries. Consider ventilatory support, continuous positive airway pressure or intubation, and slash or enotropic support where appropriate. Invasive monitoring may be required if the patient gives a poor response, arterial line and central venous line, or pulmonary artery catheter. Short term. Hospital treatment of decompensated chronic heart failure includes the following. Monitor fluid balance, daily weight, aim to lose 0.51 kg daily, and daily urea and electrolytes. No added salt diet. Intravenous loop diuretic, e.g. furosemide once or twice daily, dose will depend on prior exposure. Angiotensin converting enzyme. ACE inhibitor, angiotensin II receptor blocker can be used if ACE inhibitor not tolerated. Consider anticoagulation, AF and LV thrombus. Avoid calcium antagonists and NSAIDs. If there is a good response, change to oral diuretics when approaching uvolemia. Aim to continue hospital treatment until edema is clearly improved and the patient is stable on oral therapy for 48 hours. In patients with impaired renal function it may be necessary to accept some residual edema rather than precipitate acute on chronic renal failure. Do not use JVP as the sole guide for treatment because this is often persistently elevated as a result of TR. If weight loss is not satisfactory on twice-daily furosemide, add a thiazide diuretic, bendroflumethiazide 2.5 mg or metolazone 2.55 mg daily, but watch renal function closely. If diuresis remains unsatisfactory, establish continuous intravenous furosemide infusion, e.g. 5-10 mg slash hour. Fluid restriction should be held in reserve for resistant cases. Rarely, enotropes, dopamine or dobutamine, are required for a few days to assist diuresis. Following discharge and early review is important to prevent re-decompensation. Check renal function and up-titrate medication. Long term. NB. You are a physician, doctor. You would promise life to a corpse if he could swallow pills. Napoleon Bonaparte Counseling a patient with heart failure can be very difficult as the prognosis is often poor. Yet education is key to enhancing patient compliance. It is important to judge each case individually and not give the patient unrealistic expectations. The following improve symptoms and life expectancy.
ACE inhibitor for all patients, unless contraindicated. Titrate to maximum tolerated dose. Beta blocker, e.g. bisoprolol, carvedilol or nebavilol, in patients with stable NYHA24 symptoms. Only start when clinically stable and uvolemic. Start low, go slow. Titrate to maximum tolerated dose. Hypotension may be avoided by reducing other drugs including diuretics where possible. If fluid retention occurs increase the loop diuretic. Try to continue the beta blocker if at all possible, because side effects are usually transient. Candizardin, angiotensin receptor blocker, can be added in patients who remain symptomatic despite ACE inhibitors and beta blockers. Spironolactone in patients with NYHA34, creatinine 5.5 mol slash L. Check electrolytes weekly for two weeks and stop spironolactone if K plus 6.0 mol slash L. Digoxin does not prolong life, but improves symptoms and reduces hospital admissions in more severe cases of heart failure. Cardiac resynchronization therapy, dual chamber pacemaker with additional LV lead, may be considered in symptomatic patients with poor LV function and left bundle branch block. Implantable cardioverter defibrillator in selected patients. Surgical intervention may be beneficial in carefully evaluated patients with valvular disease and those with ischemic etiology and ongoing angina. Cardiac transplantation, of which there are around 200 annually in the UK, is indicated for the following. Acute heart failure not responding to ventilation and enotropic support. A ventricular assist device, artificial heart, may be used as a bridge to transplantation if a suitable donor is not immediately available, Fig 49. The function of the heart may improve, and transplantation avoided, when it is rested by one of these devices. However, use of a ventricular assist device is frequently complicated by thromboembolism and infection. Chronic progressive heart failure in young patients with very poor prognosis and no comorbidity. NB It is infinitely better to transplant a heart than to bury it so it can be devoured by worms. Christian N. Barnard Complications AF Ventricular tachycardia Sudden death Progressive heart failure Renal embarrassment. Prognosis. Mortality related to ejection fraction and NYHA class. Chronic stable heart failure. Overall annual mortality rate is 10%. Following hospitalization, annual mortality rate is 30-50%. Mortality rate of NYHA 4 is up to 60% in one year. Prevention. Primary. Prevention of MI. Prompt reperfusion therapy for acute MI. Avoid excess alcohol. Secondary. ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, and spironolactone all reduce progression of heart failure and mortality. NB. Important information for patients. Advise a no-added salt diet. Moderate alcohol intake. Avoid heavy lifting, potentially arrhythmogenic. May feel worse for a few days after starting beta blocker, or if the dose is increased. Must weigh themselves daily and report to their GP or increase dose of diuretic if they gain weight, 1-2 kg in 3 days or greater than 2.5 kg in 2 weeks. Education and monitoring ideally performed in conjunction with a specialist heart failure nurse.